Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Inspiration. Well, hello, everybody that's listening. My name is Trevor Drotty. I'm the assistant pastor at Fellowship Baptist Church in the North City, Tennessee. If you listen to the last three devotions on here, it was a three-parter by my boss, Pastor Josh Gerwitz, and he did it on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, I encourage you to go back and give it a listen. It'll help you along. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 32. I want to take a look at a man that we're all familiar with. We know about him. We've, we've learned of him. It's one of those that you're told about as a child in Sunday school class. But um, let's take a look and see how we can apply some of his mistakes, some of the things that he did right, and, and apply it to our own lives. In Genesis chapter 32, we're going to pick up in his life after he's already stolen Esau's birthright. He's stolen Esau's blessing. He's tricked Esau out of one. He's tricked their father out of the other. He ran away and stayed with a man named Laban. Now, he wanted to marry Laban's daughters. So he had to work for a few years for one, and then he had to work for a few more years to marry the other one, whom he actually wanted to marry. And because he and Laban are both tricksters, they can't seem to dwell together, so Jacob leaves. Now, in the beginning of chapter 32 of the book of Genesis, we're going to find Jacob having to face Esau again for the first time since he stole his birthright. So let's, let's go there now. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 1. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host, and he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother under the land of Seir, to the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob, saith thus. I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen and asses, flocks, men servants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Now before we continue on, let's try to take ourselves and put ourselves in the mind of Jacob. Imagine how this has been. This has been years. This has been something like 20 years since he stole the birthright from his brother. He stole the blessing, the very the very promise that a coming Savior would come from his descendants, that his descendants would be numbered as the sand of the sea. He stole this from Esau. The last time he saw Esau, he, he knew that his brother wanted to kill him. I, I don't know that I've ever had anybody so angry with me that I, they wanted to take my life, but I can tell you for certain, when I make a mistake, if I wrong somebody, it weighs on me. I find myself trying to clean it up in every way that I possibly can. I'm plotting and thinking. Imagine how much time over the last two decades Jacob has spent just planning. What am I going to say to Esau the next time I see him? I mean, goodness. If you had stolen the very future that belonged to your brother and he wanted to kill you, how are you supposed to apologize for that? How are you supposed to atone for what you've done for him? And here what he does is he gives his servants a message to give to Esau. He, he lists off all the things that he has. He wants to give Esau gifts. And what he's going to try to do, his plan is this. He's going to butter up Esau so that Esau doesn't kill him. So the messengers go, they meet Esau, and look what they have to say in verse number 6. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee. Oh, that would just make you melt in your boots right there. And four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. Now let's, let's just, let's not be super critical of Jacob. I can't imagine what any of us would do if we were in this situation. He finds out that not only is Esau there, but Esau is coming to meet him. And what does Esau have? In verse 6, it says that he has 400 men. Now, my personal belief is that Esau was on his way to go and kill his brother here. I do. There's no way that says that that's the intention. But why else would he be on his way to meet Jacob with such a large host of men? It doesn't just say people, but men. He's on his way to meet Jacob, this man that stole everything from him, this man that tricked him out of everything that was to be his. I think Jacob, when he hears this, he knows what the truth is, and that is that he is about to face the punishment for the things that he's done in the past. 
There are things that I've done that I don't even like to think about. Places that I've been, things that I've seen, things that I've said. Whenever the devil takes those things and throws them back in my face, it just, each one has a way of ruining a perfectly good day. You'd be trying to go about your business, trying to serve the Lord. And here's this sin, this thing you did so long ago. And so often we get stuck in the past. I believe Jacob here, the first thing we see is that he's stuck in the past. He's stuck on his mistakes. He's stuck on the pain that he's caused. And and if we're being truthful, what Jacob needs to do, he needs to let go of it and let God have control over it. Remember, Jacob has the promise of the Lord. He has Israel's blessing. He, He hasn't received the name Israel yet, but he's got the blessing. He's already been promised by God that his descendants will be numbered as the sand of the sea. He's got a promise that God will love him. He's got a promise that God will prosper him. But what, what do we find here? Verse 7, Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. I, I don't know what each of you is going through. I don't know what you do in your day to day. Truthfully, I don't even know who listens to this. I don't know if this is going to go out to anybody that I've ever met personally. But I know that there's got to be something. Whether it's something big or something small that, just like it says about Jacob, has you afraid and distressed. And the things that weigh on me the most, the things that just hurt me the most, it's the things that I have done wrong. People can say things to me, say things about me, try to do things to me. I mean, goodness, I got hit by a car a few months and nothing has ever been as bad as the weights that I have placed on myself with my own mistakes. Even at times, I'll find that and I'd say I'm not alone in this. I'll even not talk to God for a day or two because I feel ashamed to because of a mistake that I've made. Understand this. The only way that you can get so far that you can't talk to God is if you choose to. He always will want to fellowship with you no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. And here, Jacob needs to take this and he needs to place it at the Lord's feet. And he doesn't really do that. Look at what he says in verse number nine. Jacob said, Oh God, he is, he is uh, now he is praying. He says, Oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord which says unto me, Return unto thy country, unto thy kindred, and I will deal well with these. He's referring to the promise he's been given. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan. And now I am become two bands. Remember, he has split all of his family members, all of his servants, all of his wealth into two two bands. With the idea being that if Esau attacks one, he can flee with the other. What a sad state he is to be in. He's willing to sacrifice half of everything he has so he can survive with the other half. Verse 11, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him. He doesn't say he fears God, does he? He says, I fear him. Lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with the children, talking about his wives and his children. Thou saidest, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. He lodged there that same night. And took of that which came to his hand present for Esau his brother. Two hundred she-goats, twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes, and twenty rams. And what do we find Jacob doing? He he gets on his knees, he gets on his face, he does the thing that he should be doing. And he's begging God for mercy. He's begging God for guidance and protection. And you think, goodness, he's found it. He's figured it out. He's in a difficult spot and he knows that he needs to lean on God. But then he does what we so often do. He turns and then he continues to try to fix the problem himself. How often do we take something to the altar, lay it there before the Lord, and then as we pick it up, we go back to our seat and we take it with us. We ask the Lord to guide us and to protect us, and we ask him to, to use us. And we ask him for all these things, and then without any faith, we begin to try to fix the problem ourselves just in case God doesn't do it. That's what Jacob's doing. Here, he has no faith that God will preserve him, that God will prosper him. He's saying it. He's, he's talking about God's mercies. He invert, the end of verse 9, he says, uh, he's quoting God, I will deal well with thee. Yeah, his actions tell otherwise. 
You can tell by what he does in verse number 14. He, he organizes this great gift for Esau. Verse 14, 200 she-goats, 20 he-goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milch camels with their colts, 40 kine, that's pigs, and 10 bulls, 20 she-asses and 10 foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves. And said unto his servants, Pass over before me and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When he saw my brother made of thee, and asked thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose art these before thee, thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my lord Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And all of your problems, everything that you face, are you doing what Jacob's doing? Trying to figure it out on your own trying to solve it, trying to weasel your way out of it, or are you doing what you need to do? And that's leaving it in God's hands. Whether it's something about your job, your family, a wayward child maybe, looking for a spouse, maybe marital problems. I don't know what you, what you deal with on a daily basis, but take it and place it in God's hands. It's the safest place that it can ever be. That's all I have for you. Tomorrow we'll continue on here looking at Jacob, but for, for right now I think we'll call it quits for the day. I'll see you tomorrow.